Wow, it's so clean in here. <laughs> yeah, it's so nice. Not air fault. Yeah. Yeah, it's other people's some looking people, people it's mine. For some people it's a laundry house, for some people it's a recording studio. Uh there's just a little bottle of water over there for you if you want to have a drink. It's vegan water. Type. It's vegan water, it's hundred percent vegan water. It's not a snake. Yep. Did you guys film this? I'm filming it now. People Using. didn't realize that they actually have to lock the door for it to like turn like to turn the screen on so they were just like in there with like <laughs> showing to the entire world you know like completely transparent so the city had to leave the screen turned on the whole time so that people stop sh you know sh showing everything <laughs> yeah every time there's, I come there's here there's a bunch of tourists here <laughs> this tries out the transparent bathroom. It's see-through, I'm telling you. Look, it's see-through. See it's see-through. Yeah. Like, that one's fine. This is the yeah. Japanese work culture. culture. Working very hard in a sushi restaurant. This is insane. This is a lot. Hmm? This is a lot. It's a lot. If this got big weights, more appearance. What's the difference between 70 kilos and 10 kilos? So he did 270 right after he saw your 265 for 10. And I was like, I gotta, I gotta add five kilos to that. Did he actually? Ah, yes. And it's super strict. Make sure your back stays in the pitch. Yeah, got my veins. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, I literally got a, like a glimpse of his balls. Uh, what is this thing called? This is called a fridge machine and it makes fridges out of people. It just compresses you into a fridge. Yeah, I literally just, you come in. So Dar would walk in there, for example, and poof, I would come someone like me. You know? My left elbow? Yeah. See my right elbow? Whoa, what? Yeah, it's a bit weird. What's happening? <laughs> I just, they all got really kind of... So if you look, left oh. elbow, perfect extension, right elbow, just can't extend. That's it. not good for weightless. No, it's not. No, it's not. Yeah. <laughs> I, I didn't understand what you meant in your videos. Like yeah. You never demonstrated yeah. No, yeah. Yeah. Can you see? Like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's how you fix elbow extension. Going on some anime music, yeah, right throughout the city. <laughs> I mean, like, like, I don't want to stereotype it and be like, oh, everything's like anime and stuff. Like, there's certain times where you're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> like you're just walking around and then there's just like, anime music just coming from some speaker system somewhere. Wake up. It's half twelve and you have to go for a one or max squat in thirty minutes. No problem. Yeah. What happened here last night? Nobody actually goes. <laughs> what do you think of Japanese television? It's very interesting. It's just people eating. Literally just change the channel and uh, it's another episode of people eating food um, we've got yellow yellow and pink and yellow and red the only essential macro yeah yellow and red and white white is good too oh. whoa, 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 whoa. all of this is booze and it looks so delicious <laughs> so this was our daily walk to the gym the black ships gym in tokyo great gym um the week we actually were in tokyo 
was the hottest week of the year, supposedly. I remember the temperature was 37 degrees one day. Uh, for the Americans watching, that's 310.15 Kelvin. But when it's that hot and you're training hard, you definitely want the best clothes for the job. Luckily, I can recommend some great clothes from this week's sponsor, Barbell Apparel. I actually really struggle to find good training gear. For example, this year I bought an expensive pair of shorts, only for it to rip apart at the bottom of a squat. Luckily, the clothing on Barbell Apparel is specifically designed for lifters and is of very high quality, I can guarantee you that. They have a huge range of training gear and clothes for a variety of purposes. My personal favorites are the Phantom Shorts, Ultra Lightweight Joggers, and the Stealth Hoodie, which is perfect with the change of season. You can actually get a free Stealth Hoodie with any order over $99. You can find my custom collection on Barbell Apparel with the link in the description and pinned comment. Big thanks to Barbell Apparel for sponsoring this video. Japanese toddlers are the cutest motherfucking things I've ever seen. So independent. You just, yeah, yeah. Apparently if you see them going around the city with like a yellow hat or jacket on or something, it means they need a little bit more help than normal. So older than toddlers, like five or six. They let them like go together on the subway and stuff. Yeah. Go run errands for their parents, but he's aware that if you're wearing, I think but it's the yellow hat. Kids, they're on, they're on the help roof. Just being kids at seven years old. No, bow bow. Yeah. It does not matter where you are if you stop, if you're blocking somebody. Because we're like twice as big as everybody else. Just, it was, it's weird. Like, as long as you keep moving, it's like, oh, we're good, fine. And I was like, wait, let me look at my phone. Like, you stop, and then a bunch of people are like, oh, what the hell, you know? Yeah, I mean, we're there. I think uh, Seb from Weightlifting House is up there. Seb? Oh, Seb. I, I can't train today. Let, let, let me see your shirts. Let's see this. You're bad. Um, you, you didn't even start training yet. No. No. 37 degrees? 37? Yeah. I have a YouTube video uh, called Get Over It. And it actually did really well. Get over what? <laughs> Just yourself, man. Get over it. I'm going to use this for intro. Is this our training team? Is this what we're doing? Uh, hopefully not. You were telling me uh, about this artwork here. It was done by a famous manga artist. Who is oh, it? Oh, this one. Yeah. Um, Kinniku Man. This is a re this is really like it's considered one of the classic mangas, and yeah. it was really popular because back when wrestling was very popular in Japan, it was a manga based on wrestling. It is a very famous manga artist, and he drew this just for this gym. Well, yeah. it's a terrible switch art position. His knee way over his toes, back leg way too straight. His toes out. Yeah. Back toes out. Yeah, yeah. You see the length of his toes. Yeah, he's not even wearing. Wait, toes how much? Is, how how much do you think it is on to the be bar? Fair, the bars are in uh, it, it, it could be like 50 kilo plates. So. I think it's 176. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. There, <laughs> there, there's like a a point five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what's the issue with his snatch right here? So his hips are too low, he's pushing his knees out too much and then we're not moving your feet enough so he makes it very hard for his knees to get out of the way. Keeps the barbell really far away from his center of mass. Nice, there we go. That was so much better, yeah. So we recently, the barbell center mass is here and then we have a really long joint angle to get our knees out the way to keep it close. Because yeah. we want the barbell center mass and our center mass to converge. But the barbell center mass is pulling us forward. So we want to put ourselves in the best position to make them converge really efficiently. Coach curve. Yeah. A little higher? Here. A little higher. Here. Yeah, there we go. Strong back. Uh -huh. There you go. Oh. Oh. 
So, what squat racks do you use at home? I use the cheapest squat racks. Yeah. You know, there's, I think it's Pullum, maybe, or D8 Fitness I bought it from. Yeah, yeah. I think they were like 100 I used the exact same ones you did, and I squatted up to 290, and they're totally fine. Yeah. And they cost like 50 pounds. They're rated to 150, I think. Yeah, but well, it's totally fine. Yeah, yeah it's no reason. Yeah, yeah. Uh, one of the gremlin fingers. Do you use that to describe when they're. Feels good though. Are you trying to change anything with your squat technique these days? Oh, so Tajiki was like, chest up way more and then breathe into the chest to get it up even more. Yeah. So you have as much thoracic extension as possible mm -hmm. and then keep it during the squat. Yeah. So we're going to give that a go. It's hard for me to do, but only because I haven't been doing it. It's not like... Were you saying like other coaches said the same thing in the past? So Anton, for all of my snatch, pulls everything. Yeah. He wants way more action for me in the catch, in the pull. And the squat, yeah. everything he wants more of this. So it's like a, it's like a pattern I haven't trained, you know. So I just need to train it more. I feel pretty good, but I feel like I'm just like extra motivated right now because all of you guys are here. Yeah. Of Usually I'm never gonna go heavy yeah. this often. <laughs> but yesterday I was only planning on doing, I don't know, maybe like 180 for a set of 10 and just leaving it there, the squat. But since everyone was squatting. I felt left out, so I did a lot more sets. I even went up to 225. So. That's, a, that's a power of FOMO right there. <laughs> Do you usually snatch more often than your clean and jerk? Yeah. Definitely two to one at least. Um, but do you but even I, like I'll going light? Do you like going light in the plane and jerk? Not really, no. I, yeah. I'm, I would front squat and I would consider that. And front squat and I would jerk and I would consider that more clean and jerk. Even though it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But usually that's like what I would do. Genuinely, like, front squat is the, the, it's the greatest lift. It really does the most yeah. with, the fewest mm. amount, with the littlest amount of effort. Yeah, like many people think it helps with the clean, but I found it helps a lot with the jerk dip and drive as well. Yeah. Like yes. it prepares me better for like heavy clean jerks. It just makes my rack position stronger and more stable. Uh, you, can, you can basically think of the, the jerk dip as just cutting your front squat very short. Yeah. Like a very short. <laughs> What do you think of my squat? What do you think I should change? What's your opinion, really? Ideally, I'd like to see a more consistent back angle when you're squatting. Yeah. So you have, uh, you change your back angle twice. Mm. So you come forward as you sit down, but then you end up really upright. Yeah. But then as you start squatting again, you change your back angle. Yeah. Sit. Ah! So you go forward, end yeah. up in a great position, and then forward and stand up, you know. Yeah. It's not as exaggerated as that. Sometimes it heavier weights. Yeah. yeah, no, definitely. I agree. Because uh, I, I think the main reason I'm doing that at the moment is because of my hip injury. Okay. And I also did it before when my knee, knees are injured. So yes. it just hard. became a habit, yeah. It's hard yeah. to work, yeah. I think like the yeah. non-standard piece of your technique, you can see error because of those injuries and because of like a history yeah. of like pain. Mm. And I think it's the same thing with your feet. So your feet tend to be extra angled out. Yeah. You'll see like the thing we're always looking for with, with feet is the knee tracking when your feet are like that. So you'll see like with Tashiki's knee tracking as he sits down, he's very toed out. But yeah. He's very much like yeah. knee going over the middle toe, mm. you know. Whereas you'll see with yours, as you hit that kind of like secondary position, mm. your knees are actually slightly inside the yeah. of your toes. Um, now, in your case, I think you've so much quad development and so much hip development where that's probably not an issue for someone like you, mm. obviously, because you've scored massive weights. Yeah. But I think with the standard person, when they're in that stance, our tissues and our, our knee joint itself just isn't designed really to move in that kind of like slightly valgus yeah, direction, yeah. you know. Um, but in your case, where there's so much physical development, it's not as much of a problem. Yeah, yeah. Well, how do you think... Uh 
I'd fix this issue if I wanted to fix it. What do you think I, I should do? With the foot position thing, actually, yeah. I bring your feet slightly in, and the one thing I would actually strangely enough recommend is like the slightly flatter shoes. Oh, so like in your case, yeah. If you were to bring your toes in, like to a slightly more standard place position, you brought your toes in, you yeah. had the heel rest lift. Like if you're wearing the ROM twos, I think you might actually see some like extra forward knee travel, which for most people would be great. Yeah. But in your case, I think that extra forward knee travel could mm. actually bring about mm. some extra pain, yeah. you know. Yeah. Um, so I'd probably keep squatting in those shoes. But what I did actually, um, for like 10 weeks, I stopped back squatting entirely. Okay. And I just did front squats and I found that helped me because like with front squats, it actually forced me to use my quads more and yeah, so uh, pushing, push my knees more push forward. More, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's, and uh, my, my hips actually felt pretty good when I was doing that as well. Yeah. Yeah. It's quite annoying because if you look back at my old squat videos, the, squat. the technique yeah, yeah, was yeah. actually better. That's what you yeah. want, basically. Because I wasn't crippled from injuries and everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. It's, it's really annoying because uh, I always look back to you know, videos when I was like 17, 18. Uh, yes. My, my technique is way better. Yeah. Like the back angle is way more consistent. I was way more upright. Yeah. But yeah. These you seem days, to be getting yeah. back to that side of squatting. Yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm really trying. Yeah. 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 I really think for, for me, when looking at your videos, when you use train and you have yeah. you know those five by five videos. Yeah. Yeah. And that was like super, like you have that constant back yeah. angle. You have that really nice knee tracking. Okay. Um, they were, to be honest, they were like technically supremely good yeah. squats, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Um, but obviously, when you train that hard for that long yeah. and you start picking up those little niggles and those injuries, you're obviously gonna have some technical uh, yeah. like accommodations because of that. Yeah, I think like the squat training I did was like, you know, high reward and high risk. Yes. Yeah. Like, um, of course, you know, I, I was able to like squat over 300 kilos, but then I injured myself. So now I'm trying to, I don't know, progress my squat uh, with, with smarter training, less frequency perhaps. Yeah. Like I'm more looking at the long-term progression yeah. <laughs> rather yeah, than the yeah. short-term progression. Because I, I could spend, you know, like a month just banging out squats every single day and increase my squat by like you know, 20 kilos right now. Yeah. But I'll injure myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Narrow stance, toes more forward. I wouldn't even go that much narrower. I go the same width you were using, and so, just the toes slightly. Yeah. Yeah. Honestly, these days I'm just squatting in a way that puts less, uh, the least amount of stress on my hips. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah. It causes the least pain. Like, I don't know. So can you explain the Toshiki workout? So just to be clear, the Toshiki workout is a terrible idea and I don't think anyone should do it, just to be clear. I'm doing it because... It's probably like a, the Japanese thing, all of them did it at one point. Yeah, I think Jang was probably all got injured as well. <laughs> everyone got injured. Yeah, everybody got injured doing it. So basically it's just loads of volume and heavy weight. It does kind of 70 to 80 percentish weights, which are super valuable. But the reason you can't do that all the time is because it's very hard to do meaningful weights that consistently yeah. unless you're an absolute beginner um, I'm trying it today just for the next few days just because literally because it's just fun to do um, and it's challenging and it's good to do hard things but yeah, it gets good yeah it gets good views like yeah. it's, it's it's entertaining it's values I think with well, every video you have to put the words Clarence squad steroids drugs um, what else? Toshiki. Toshiki. Um, that's about it, really, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah, I think that's, I think that's a guarantee. Yeah, our doping. Um, lose our gym. Oh, lose our gym. Yeah. Lasha. Chinese weightlifting. Chinese weightlifting. China. CrossFit doping. I think they're all the good ones. 
The following show features stunts performed either by professionals or under the supervision of professionals. Accordingly, MTV and the producers must insist that no one attempt to recreate or reenact any stunt or activity performed on this show. Hi, I'm Johnny Knoxville. Welcome to Jackass. ウェイトリフティングを学びたいか今ならクラレンスのウェイトリフティング初心者ガイドで学ぶことができるぞクラレンスのサイトに行けば他にもたくさんのプログラムが載っているスクワットプログラムウェイトリフティングプログラムなんとベンチプレスプログラムもあるぞ怪しいこの動画の概要欄とピンされたコメントのリンク先をチェックするんだTrust your counting, or was it your counting? <laughs> It's Dara's counting. <laughs> But you're、uh, 20 rep max with 200. So I went to do 20 for 200 for 20 reps、uh, a couple of years ago, and obviously when I was going to go do 200 for 20, you think your training partner in the gym would watch, but he wasn't watching. And as I was squatting, I was like, "Can you count?" I asked him to count beforehand, but he just wasn't paying attention. So I ended up doing 19, thinking I'd done 20. Could have easily done another two reps if I wanted to, but I thought I'd done twenty. So there's a couple of lies here.、Yeah. <laughs> the first lie is that I was training next to Gert, so we were training together. Yeah, I said training, but、partner. I was still training. Training、so、partner. So with a bar like at my feet, Gert is like four reps in. He said nothing about this beforehand. As we were starting training, he was like, 
oh, I think I might do 20 reps. So as you're starting training... I did training, say something. Interesting. But he never asked me to count. So then Gurf is like <laughs> racking out squats, right? And he's like four or five reps in. And he shouts and he goes, will you count? But I was in no way concentrating on what was happening. <laughs> exactly. So I just yeah. started counting. Did the best approximation I could, being a great training partner that I am. Just started counting and I said five, six, seven, fast forward, I say 19, 20. Gareth puts the bear back. To be fair, he could have done a number of reps more. You weren't maxed out. No. He re-racks the bear, dies for around 45 minutes. <laughs> around an hour later, Gareth watches the video and counts and it's 19 reps. And suddenly, it's my fault. Do you know what? You know what the problem here is? If you know your gym partner is going for 200 for 20 reps, you'd be paying attention when there's 200 on the bar. I think everyone would agree. I agree. Yeah. Guilty by your own admission. Cut yeah. the video, end it there. Yeah, I think okay. if we just communicated better as a training <laughs> pair. This is Hold always... But you sex. can't expect an Irish person to communicate. An Irish male to just, communicate no. about anything. It's I've grunts, asking, it's a series of grunts, <laughs> and you need to know exactly what he's doing when he's doing. Do not make him vulnerable and have to be like, hey, Derek, can you uh, no, please I'll, watch? But I really I need I, I can't to ask say, for help. I'm not going to ask you no, for help. What you, need to do, yeah, I'm gonna do. what you needed to do is like, don't you dare count these reps. Yeah, and then I would have counted them out loud. Yeah. He would have be like, I'll murder you if you count these reps. Yeah. I would have counted them out loud. Stop like. watching. Yeah. But anything when I said. Come on, girl. Last set. Last set, best set. No breader. The last set. Not a good idea. Terribly for blood pressure. The DVA and aorta. <laughs> I don't think my bench is narrow grip. I think everyone just benches with a super wide grip that they think my grip is super narrow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So for most people who aren't powerlifters who want to get the best arm recruitment and shoulders and chest recruitment as well, you shouldn't be benching with a wide grip. Benching with a wide grip is like sumo deadlifting. It's like squatting with a very wide stance just to like above parallel. It's not a good training tool for most people. If you want to get the strongest arms, strongest shoulders, strongest, even pecs to a certain extent, you should have that 45 degree angle between your torso and your, your upper arm. And then it's just keeping that forearm vertical to the floor. Wherever your contact point is, then your contact point is. Don't worry about it being in line with your nipple or halfway between your nipple and the bottom of your sternum, you just look for that vertical forearm, 45 degrees between the torso and the humerus, and you're good to go. What's your opinion on the infamous zero bench, the Japanese oh, zero yeah. bench? From the rack out position, my bar has already attached my chest, so I call this no range bench press, also zero bench. Literally yeah. on rack and yeah. rack. <laughs> that's, I think that's basically most tactical awareness like that's using a, the best tactics you possibly can for a sport it's like somebody in a soccer match just like barely tapping a ball past the defender and it's not a great it might be like a toe poke of a kick it might be a great kick it might be technically the most perfect kick that gets the job done that's what that is for the bench press like in my opinion the new rule isn't good enough what do you think about that what is, is the new rule the elbow passing below the level of the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I think in general, making a rule that's going to work perfectly the first time around, yeah. it's almost never happens in sport. It's a step in the right direction yeah, for sure. Definitely, yeah. and I think like the more years that they're using those rules, it's great that they have like an active participation in trying to make the sport better mm. and trying to make the sport more applicable to general athletes. Um, but. It almost never happens where somebody changed the rule and straight away it's perfect. Yeah. Like in basketball, they brought in the shot clock. The shot clock makes everything great, but those things still take some tweaking over time. Is powerlifting as big as weightlifting in Japan, or which one's bigger? Powerlifting is much, much bigger okay. in Japan. And in, the, in Korea, it's actually not that big. Like recreationally? Like, or like recreationally. Yeah. 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 In the uh, like DK and Ireland. 
Ireland and Europe. Yeah, yeah definitely. Yeah. Best clean of all the media guys, for sure. So who are the media guys? Gregor, Nat, Seb, Django, aka Jang Ho. He's going to squat jack journalist. You know him? Yilin. Yeah. What are all their maxes? Yilin, his max clean is like 100. Nat has, I don't know, I don't know if he only lifts, but I know he does 260 deadlift. Gregor has done 220. Right? But you know what's the most impressive? The most impressive is Dr. Boffa doing like 180 bench press or something. What? Yeah, he has like a <laughs> massive bench press. <laughs> so I was wondering, um, you know, with Toshiki's sponsorship. No, I remember there was a video of Toshiki like back squatting 300 kilos in a... In a barbershop, right? Yeah, a barbershop. Yeah. What was that about? <laughs> I'll be honest, I have no f***ing clue. I don't, I don't know what... If you go to a barbershop, they have this big ass chair, right? Mm. They literally brought it and put it on the platform and had Toshiki sit in the middle and he was getting his hair cut on the competition platform. <laughs> yeah. So Toshiki got his hair cut on that platform and he also scored a 321 kills on that platform. Yep. What else has he done on that platform? <sighs> that wasn't as good as the parkour you did uh, with Gabriel in Romania. You ready for parkour? Fulfilled your purpose. So, what do you think of Japanese coffee? I love it, and I think it's hard. It's hard for me to explain. Um, someone actually commented um, that a lot of their history has has like developed their culture into what it is today, and a lot of that has to do with World War II. Um, I don't know the exact details, but what you can see with many many Japanese people is that they just they just care the devil is in the details um, we were just walking down here and a woman's dog peed on like a little post and she took her water bottle and sprayed the post everyone kind of like does their part collectively and that's how a city like this that is so densely populated you don't get that feeling of dense population you know what I'm saying I've been in big cities before where you're like, this is, this is going to kill me, you know, but it's just this established culture and, you know, this coffee that this guy made me took him five minutes to make um, and he, he just loves it. He loves making coffee. He loves making lattes and he, and like, this is without a doubt the greatest coffee I've ever had. I can, I can honest to God say that. And I'm in the moment right now, and of course I have a bias. I've got a Japan hard on, but I swear on my life, this is the best coffee I've ever had. There's no question. So honne means like your true feelings. Yeah. And tatemai is like things you say just to be nice, not yeah. to not sound like an a-hole, basically. Yeah. Let's say someone's not that good at lifting, but then the guy comes up to you and asks, oh, how's my lifting today? Yeah. Your honne will be like, oh, this guy, his lifting is not that great, you know? Yeah. But then tatemai will be like, oh, you did great today! Yeah, yeah. Amazing, awesome, fist bump! That's tatemai. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> your kind of fake mask that you put yeah. on. Yeah. And this is, it, it's very common in Japan where you would act like the nicest person outside, but then the moment you go home, like you just trash talk about the person you just interacted with. That is very common in Japan. But I think that culture, you know, helps people be nice to others, yeah. you know. What do you think of uh, the public transport system in Tokyo? How'd you find it? I have minimal experience with public transport anywhere else. No, I'm joking. It's very good. It's like, uh, it reminds me of like Germany or Austria or Hungary. It's all just on time. It's like the trams, it's clean. Everybody knows the rules. We, uh, we have a pretty terrible public transport system in Ireland, so it's uh, rarely on time. People are rarely well behaved, uh, frequently arrives too late or might skip a stop. Uh, I would never use public transport at home. 
the trains are getting better uh, and they're not that dear but uh, the actual infrastructure isn't quite there for them at the moment obviously Japan is pretty amazing but I think Japan is like one of the best in the world so it's uh, it's a high standard to reach for me uh, the best part about the public transport here is like you don't have to plan your journey you can just show up yes, yes. at your stop and just go and it's always going to be on time yeah. it is so strict here with um, trains and buses being on time actually, yeah. I don't know if other people appreciate this but in Ireland if you're using public transport you have to plan it like you have to you have to check it the day before because there might be one train or two trains yeah. uh, like a lot of stations you like you'd have to buy the ticket online or beforehand and no it's a uh, it's definitely much more accessible here. Like you can get public transport pretty much whenever, pretty much to wherever, and for a very, very cheap cost compared to a lot of other places. So my whole time in Tokyo, I noticed there's just a lot of strange things that you don't see anywhere else. So like, like the amount of karaoke buildings, uh, maid cafes, Love hotels. Love hotels. What, what are these places? Okay, I'll, I'll start with the maid yeah. cafes. Maid cafes, basically, you go there and these young girls usually... Oh, this is a karaoke. Oh, that's a maid cafe. So... <laughs> so basically, you go in there and, and they have these girls in their early 20s dressed up as maids. And the concept is that you're the master and they're the maids. So the moment you walk in, they'll be like, Welcome back home, master. Even though it's your first time there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And basically, you get treated like a king when you walk in there and they, they'll they serve you. for women as well. What's that called? Uh, hosto club, I think. Hosto club. Yeah. yeah. It's, it, it's, it's, I, I think the popular one these days are the BL concept cafes boys love concept cafes so like these guys um, young good-looking men they like they pretend like they they're like they secretly have a crush on each other yeah, yeah. and then they'll they'll like act it out in front of the the lady customers Sorry. love hotels is uh, <laughs> it's it, I mean I feel like it's pretty self-explanatory it, it's it's these tiny hotels yeah. But most, it's mostly used for like, basically. And Soapland is. Ah, uh, I, I feel like this is gonna. This is this appropriate for your channel, bro? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Getting paid to have. You know, is actually considered illegal here. Yeah. yeah. But Soapland, the concept is that these two, <laughs> these. Um, one man and one woman just accidentally happened to fall in love in this room. <laughs> so <laughs> it's like it's like that gray area where it's like yeah. it's kind of illegal, but it's not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what a soap blend is. <laughs> I mean, overall, I, I think singing is very huge in like any Asian country, like Philippines, like Japan, Korea. Like yeah. it's singing is very popular and. And I think if you go to like America or Europe, karaoke are usually like karaoke machines are only available in like bars, yeah, right? Yeah. But here it's like they have stores just for the sake of like practicing singing or like people with um, groups of people, friends, they'll go to karaoke box yeah. and they'll take turns singing or yeah. all sing a song they know. It's a one way of people having fun over here. Yeah. 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 Where did I go? Oh, there. Yeah. It is? Yeah. It is? Amazon. <laughs> it's available on Amazon. Well, it's available on Amazon. This. Uh. <laughs> We're buying him cakes, so he's calling us his sugar Dad, daddy. Daddy buys me all the sweets. <laughs> it's gonna make him a super. The point of being so tall if you're not 140 kilos. <laughs> Psychosocial so. in the uh, plush, uh, plush store. Pretty awesome.
My back is as wet as an otter's pocket. Can't even pull one. I'm gonna do a 23 and leave at this and see if he's actually secretly Japanese. So I, I thought getting uh, gear in Japan is kind of difficult. Wait, well, what is this? Oh, oh, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. It's, uh, uh, they don't look real. I know what those animals are. What are you looking at? Oh, no, the little cutie bone. AI generated or something. That's like one of those vegan things where it's like, where do you draw the line? And there's a cow around the corner. To say we stink would be an understatement. Like, it's either you spend a week in Tokyo or you spend months in Tokyo. Yeah. It's just, and we, we did as much as we could outside of work, I think, to see. Yeah, yeah. And we didn't see, what, one of like 20 cities, basically, or whatever you call them. We saw, I think we saw a lot of Shibuya. And then a little bit of Shinziko, is it? And now we're in, is this Roppongi or is it separate from Roppongi? I have no idea. Yeah, so we're barely getting to see this. Yeah. And every bit looks kind of different from the other. I'd like to see some of the gardens. I would like to see some of the country. We like seeing some of the, the kind of yeah. down by the docks. Is that? Uh, it's uh, the stairs for go down. You don't have a big thing. Stairs for go down. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, even on a place like this, there is anime. There's anime everywhere. Blue Lock? Do you know this one? <laughs> no. I do. It's like a soccer anime though. Am I, <laughs> am I gonna walk it? Yeah, walk it. No, Come on, Owen. No problem. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that was that was the first bath up I did in like two weeks. But before that, it was like I don't know, like two years. So I, I'm not conditioned for bath flipping. <laughs> for down elevators, for go down elevator. What has been the most interesting thing about Japan for you? Um, oh, that's a good question. I think probably the cultural differences, just how different people are in relation to Irish people. Like the, it's not that Irish people aren't nice, but they're not super polite. They will be polite to people, maybe tourists and stuff, or helping people out, but when it comes to just general politeness, Japanese people take like the biscuit for everything in every situation, whereas Irish people, you know, if you're in someone's way, someone will be like, you know, there's Sorry. loads of like banter and sarcasm yes. in like Irish culture and it just doesn't exist here. Yeah. So it that's really the thing I was like trying to be careful about while we we're here. Yeah. yeah. It, they definitely have humor obviously, but it's just a different kind of humor. But you know, if you're trying to get some buy someone in the shop, like Japanese people won't touch off you or they won't come near you. Yeah. And maybe that is a foreigner thing because they won't sit next to us on the the train, for example. But yeah. when it comes to the just like pushing by the shop they'll Make sure you know they're there. Was an Irish person will just kind of squeeze past, maybe not even say anything, and like we wouldn't be offended by it. But I'm sure it would be different here. So the cultural aspects. He did 100% of his strength training the last week this year. He's he's yearly quota for strength training. He did it all this week. This week it's finished. For me, no, he's done. To be fair, you did have. This is both my prep block, my specific block, and my taper. Flexing in public, huh? What's this? Freedom energy. Zach, that's what you got written all over it. Freedom energy. That's right, brother. Freedom energy. Yeah, brother. So, what do you think of Toshiki? How'd you find him? Well, it's like tough to know how he is as a person because, like, we just can't, cannot communicate to him at all. So, 
what was cool was seeing his YouTube video. And like, you kind of got a little sense of his humor. He's got like, he's got this kind of kiddish type of humor and it's really refreshing. All I could do is like bow, bow, that's it. Cause it's like just me trying to be respectful. That was it. Uh, super, super impressive physique. Seems very strict on his diet, obviously by his physique, you could tell. Toshiki, he says he wants to come back to weightlifting. In my opinion, I'm like, why, dude? You know, like, if he feels as though he has unfinished business in, in weightlifting and he can put together a bigger total, then yes. But at a certain extent, it's like just participating in competitions kind of, it, it has to suck. And it's, I'm not saying it's not possible for him to win something and do something. Like, anything is possible, you know? But, like, it's a very strange thing for Olympics when there is opportunity outside of it. And, and that dude could proliferate so much further beyond weightlifting. And he already kind of has. Um, and I think the weightlifting purists would be mad at me for saying that, especially because I was kind of one of them. But, um, you know, the bigger picture is like, he's an extremely talented individual, not just in weightlifting. Like, he seems charismatic. Attractive dude, very good physique. Just go make money, man. You know? You know? What is going on over there? Oh, wow. What, what is this? Special massage where they bind you? Oh, cork. Nice. Cork. It's cork. Uh, the... That's where uh, Seek of Strength is located, right? Yeah. Jesus I think Christ. by our second cork. We should definitely go there. Cork is obviously in relation to... They might have pints of Murphy's. Wine. Cork. 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 Cork and a wine. Cork is 021 though. Plus 35321. Yeah. That's 03645. It's not Cork. That's not Cork at all. That's not Cork, You can't expect an Irish person to communicate. An Irish male. To just, communicate about no. anything. What do you think of Japanese food culture? I love it. Yeah. People picking one thing and then doing it incredibly well is Aww. how we should all live our lives. I love that they just pick the one thing and do it good. They don't, they don't try and do like a mix of Italian cuisine, like traditional, like carvery, all this stuff. They just pick ramen and they do an unbelievable job on it or whatever. Makes it a better product and the food. Food is cheaper than Ireland. Food is so cheap here. Yeah, to eat now it's cheap. It's yeah, shockingly cheap, cheap. yeah. Oh, uh, everyone was warning us before we came over how expensive it was. If any of those people are going on holidays in Ireland, be prepared for a shock. Look at him. He's got his lightsaber out. He's not fucking around, he's 78 years of age. It's mad, he's on the dark side though. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's a bit sinister. Yeah, he's got a red lightsaber. Yeah. Dog side. Dog side. I think it's actually just a cult and they're just recruiting people. They're just trying to catch us. He's speaking in Klingon. That's the one I want right there. Downward dog. I don't have any cash tonight. Don't this, this is the ultimate sign of the Japanese population. They have a child's toy that is a road safety awareness sign. <laughs> oh my god. What the actual I love it, yeah. It's like, <laughs> do, you, do you see the cartoon here? Oh, there's shots. Oh my god. Kamikaze shots. Kamikaze! That is cursed. Is that like vodka? No, this this is. This came from Lasha, dude. That other one was the Naeem Suleimanoglu. <laughs> Influencer oil? Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Sack. Sack. There's a section for you here. And you too. For your, um, what do we look at? Sexy strength. Come here. Is there the, the royal two? Do you have the night round two? Size 12 and a half? No. Oh, yeah, they're right here. They're normally O2s, right here. 
good pair. So this was me walking to Toshigi's gym in Ginza, Tokyo. It's a very rich area of Tokyo. Very nice. I was staying there close to his gym. And his gym is also very expensive. He has a bunch of expensive illegal equipment. He has like one of those silent illegal platforms that costs over 10 grand. I was just asking them here if uh, there's any issues with the building, like uh, when you drop like very heavy weights in this gym. And supposedly there is a small bit of vibration. <laughs> uh, depends on how much you lift. But it's kind of interesting, like the gyms and where they're located in Tokyo because it's such a dense city, like you can find them anywhere in these like office buildings. Like uh, there was actually like a, a small office in the Black Chef's gym and it was the same story with this gym as well. Yeah, supposedly there's like office workers just right above this gym and underneath this gym, there's a CrossFit gym. So a very interesting building. And here is Toshiki just randomly flexing on camera once again. And here is us having a very romantic walk in Ginza. Yeah, this, this part of Tokyo was very different from like the other parts like Shibuya, Shinjuku and Akihabara. Like there was a joke earlier in this video just showing how much anime <laughs> you can find in Tokyo. And I didn't find any anime at all in Ginza. The only thing I saw was expensive cars and very fancy restaurants and clothes shops. But yeah, Tokyo has a population of over 20 million. So this city alone like rivals the population of Australia, which is crazy to think about. There's multiple like different cities within Tokyo. So it's like cities within cities. There's many different districts. It's, um, it's massive. The thing I like most about Tokyo, like the way I would describe it, is that it just functions. <laughs> Like um, I'm living in England at the moment and I feel like this country isn't functioning at all. Like the trains are constantly delayed. The public transport like isn't punctual at all. You have people just randomly shouting on the streets, dumping rubbish everywhere. Like uh, Japan, Tokyo is the polar opposite. Everything is so clean. There's a lot of order. People are quiet. Being on the public transport is like being in the library. Everyone's just so respectful. But yeah, this is me on the bullet train to Kyoto. And I was very impressed by this service. Um, like obviously I knew about like the bullet trains in Japan, like uh, they're famous worldwide. But the thing that shocked me the most was the frequency. There were so many trains running from Tokyo to Osaka, it was crazy. So yeah, this was the underground shopping thing in Kyoto and it was massive. It was like a city underground. So I went into this tech store called Yodobashi Camera. Um, there was a lot more than cameras there. Like this store was massive, like huge. Like one of the biggest tech stores I've ever been to. Before going to Japan, I actually watched this video from Life where I'm from, really good YouTube channel. Uh, where he talked about like uh, this clip art and I saw it like everywhere in, in Tokyo. And this was Kyoto Tower. Um, very nice view of this amazing city. And of course, there was anime because there's anime everywhere in Japan. Uh, little bit Bendonese. Okay, nice, nice but okay. <laughs> oh, sorry, I didn't mean to include that clip. Uh, not sure what it was, but this is a very cleverly designed toilet I found in Kyoto. But yeah, amazing views all around. Japan was truly a beautiful country. There's no other country like it. Definitely want to visit again in the future. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. There will be two more videos of the Japan trip. And of course, there's a couple more videos from the Korea trip as well. So stay tuned.